A common problem with setting up Outlook Express. Now, if you followed through the initial tutorial on setting up Outlook Express, or you've done it yourself another way, um, and you're still having problems, one of the most common problems we experience with um, with our clients is the setup of the servers. So, if you've already set up your account but it's just not working, let's go in and click on Tools up here. Come down to Accounts. Click on Accounts. And we get the window which shows all of our accounts. Um, you may just have one, you may have two, a few, who knows. Um, pick the one that you're having problems with. If it's the one you've just set up, it'll probably be on the bottom here. Now highlight that, and then come over and click on Properties. And it will open up the properties for the account. Now this initial information isn't isn't overly important typically so it should be it's mainly just for your own information and, and what people see but the actual technical side we click on the servers tab and what we have here we get the server information now the incoming mail server should be pop3 at the top the address with our websites with chili websites will be mail.yourdomain.com that so your domain might be joesplumbing.com.au. Your website's www.joesplumbing.com.au. So your incoming mail server is going to be mail.joesplumbing.com.au. Now your outgoing mail server should not be mail.joesplumbing.com.au. It should be your ISP's outgoing mail server which would have been provided to you when you set up with your ISP, your ISP being the, the company that provides the internet connection into your office. Um, in Australia, typically this is bigpond.com or OptusNet or IINet. Um, there's many others, of course. So you need to get that outgoing mail server and ensure that that's in the outgoing mail, not in the incoming mail, and ensure like as, as well that your incoming mail is, is your domain. That's a very common mistake we get is people get those reversed. Once you've got your servers correct, the, the actual login details for those servers is very important, of course, as well. Your incoming mail server here needs to be set with your full email address at yourdomain.com. So if it's jim at joesplumbing.com.au is your email address, that's what needs to be in that account name, not your email address from your ISP. So not, you, your ISP might have given you Joe's Plumbing at bigpond.com. That should not be in your incoming mail server. Now the password for this account would have been provided to you from Chili Websites, or you may have provided an, an, a, a password for this account to Chili Websites, which you asked them to set up, and they would have replied in an email confirming that they did. Um, enter that password in here. So, so essentially, this incoming mail server and the incoming mail server up here all need to be to do with your domain name, which was set up through Chili websites. Um, ticking on remember password is, is a good idea. Now, your outgoing mail server is equally important. You're going to need to tick my server requires authentication to ensure that it's using different details than your incoming mail server. And now you click on settings. And this needs to be the account details, it needs to be set to log on using, not use the same settings as incoming mail or it won't be able to send mail. And you need to click log on using and then you need to enter the details that your ISP provided you. So as an example we mentioned before, it might be joesplumbing at bigpond.com.au would be the email address and that might be the account name they provided for you. Typically it is the full email address. Occasionally it will be something different. But again, the, the ISP will provide that for you. This should not be your account name that you're setting up the email account for at your domain name.com.au because this is your outgoing mail server, not your incoming. So it should not be jim at joesplumbing.com.au. And again, the password for this was provided for you from your ISP. It needs to be entered in here. And tick remember password is always a good idea. And then click, so you get that set up, click on OK, click on Apply to make all the changes, click on OK, and then close, and you're ready to go.